Hello, I'm John Rose, Director of Chirp Maritime. Welcome to the first Chirp News of 2017. In this bulletin, we'll be going from the smallest detail to the biggest picture. From nuts and bolts, nearly literally, to big ship near misses. But small or large, hazards on board and at sea can have equally lethal consequences. Stopping those consequences is what Chirp Maritime is all about. BA Compressor Union Coupling Failure A compressed air bottle from a lifeboat was being recharged. Suddenly, as the pressure in the bottle reached 100 bar, the union adapter between the breathing apparatus compressor and the air bottle disconnected and shot off like a bullet leaving a gun. This even though the maximum design pressure of the bottle was 200 bars. Fortunately, on this occasion, no one was hurt. But the impact of such an object traveling at such a speed could have been lethal. Looking at the picture, it seems that the part used to make this union was aftermarket. That is, a part which was not supplied by the original manufacturer. If that was the case, a likely cause of failure could have been misfit, but it could have been damaged or worn threads, just waiting to separate as pressure inside the compressed air bottle increased. As is the way with damaged threads, the fit may seem good, but the misalignment or damage meant the union could not be properly tightened. Small faults, major accidents, make sure high pressure connections are tight. A useful safety measure would have been to tie a length of cordage around the hose to prevent it from whipping back, but nothing beats fitting the right component. Manufacturer supplied, correctly fitted. Check out the UK MCA's Code of Safe Working Practices for Merchant Seafarers. This is one bullet no seafarer should have to dodge. Simple precautions during maintenance will avoid the real risk of a minor error becoming a major, even life-threatening tragedy. Uncontrolled release of a blocked pipe, another pipe incident, and an even nearer miss. When a drain pipe on board was found to be blocked and failed to clear with air blowing and water flooding, a decision was taken to heat the pipe to free it up. This worked, but very suddenly, with such force that the blockage shot out of the pipe, hitting a bulkhead opposite. The rapid ejection of the blocking material was caused by the water in the pipe converting to steam, so driving the blockage to evacuate at high pressure. The assistant to the person heating the pipe had been standing directly in front of it, but had just moved to one side at that very moment to pick up some tools. So, by pure chance, no one was hurt. The reporter talks of action taken to prevent a similar serious incident, but really the most common sense measure, standing away from the ends of a blocked pipe while it's being cleared, is enough. This is why toolbox meetings, which include a safety briefing on risk, hazard and work, are so very important. By their very nature, toolbox talks go beyond discussion on how to get the job done quickly. Any toolbox talk should include wide discussion on work and safety, with everyone present taking part and all thinking about risk, hazard and safe working. Pressure, falling objects and heat hazards are to name just a few. The aim of any toolbox talk is to think about safety and the potential for injury before starting work. Those identified hazards which can clearly cause accidental injury should be formally risk assessed. These meetings are especially important before responding to an unplanned event. One idea to help secure lasting outcomes from a toolbox talk is a traffic light system. So if there are no changes to the planned work, the status is green. If there's one change, the status becomes yellow. So pause and think before carrying on. If a second item changes, it's a red. Stop right there and assess the risks afresh. Close encounter crossing a traffic separation scheme, or TSS. Our reporter tells us that a ferry came very close to his ship in a traffic separation scheme by altering course 40 degrees to starboard to make a bow crossing when on passage between two ports. 
At first, the closest position of approach, CPA, of the ferry was set to be 1.5 miles astern. But the course alteration left a CPA and bow crossing range of 0.2 miles. VHF contact produced the response that the ferry wished to pass ahead of our reporter's ship and that he should slow down and alter to starboard as he was the giveway vessel. However, the reporter's ship was overtaking a small coaster at six cables on his starboard quarter, with no room to pass the ferry on her other side. Luckily, he was in fact able to slow down fairly quickly, allowing a CPA and bow crossing range of one mile. All of this could and should have been avoided. It was an inappropriate manoeuvre at close quarters, leading to an unnecessarily tight CPA. We had a strongly positive response from the ferry company whose regulations state, when crossing ahead of another vessel, the bow crossing distance is to be no less than 1.5 miles at all times. The company go on to criticise their officer of the watch for giving way when he was the stand-on vessel, crossing the TSS at an angle, creating another CPA, and altering into the flood tide and so losing speed. He should have stood on, they say, and gone astern of the reporter's vessel. Using the voyage data recorder, their senior master is to take up the matter with the bridge team. The company apologised to our reporter and promised to ensure wider lessons are learned from this incident. An excellent report and response. This company are to be congratulated for taking such a positive and constructive position on this incident. Sometimes, too often, it's not seafarers or their actions that are the problem, but the way their workplace is designed without sufficient thought for basic operational requirements. It's all about fitness for purpose. All the more important when by its very nature shipboard is often a far from stable or steady environment. Just look at this example. This is supposed to be where a pilot comes aboard. Trip hazards all over. It is just waiting to catch out the man or woman who has come to take your ship safely into port. An additional level of irony is added by the sign on the deck admonishing all on board to keep the area clear. Risks such as this are supposed to be reduced to as low as reasonably practical, a LARP, which is far from what has happened here of course. What's needed is a grated walkway over this nest of pipes to minimise the chances of personal injury. There's good guidance on the human element in ship design in the publication Alert issue number 36. And how about this? This light fitting in the middle of a bridge toilet area is clearly planned for the less tall amongst us and with no consideration for the preservation of night vision during bridge watch keeping. This is obviously dangerous whether in a seaway or not. In fact minimum head clearance at all locations on board ship is meant to be 2.1 meters. So whoever installed this has failed badly and needs to get on side with a proper design parameters. At CHIRP we have real concern over the all too frequent poor ship design of mooring stations, machinery spaces and the access to and from all ships. Your report will help us to lobby for change so please keep submitting your observations. The more you tell us, the more we can help. Stay in touch through our website, www.chirpmaritime.org. That website again, www.chirpmaritime.org. Well, that's all for the first bulletin for 2017. Stay safe and help us to keep you safe too. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now.